I'm it's achievable. Now I got the drive, get the key to go. Got the key to go. If I believe it though, yeah. Being in this space, I know I gotta hold my hope down. Seeing what it takes, I gotta know that I can show. I questioning myself if I believe it though. No longer question if I'm really unbelievable though. Now you should take into account that my account can feel my belief. Take into account I must account for what I really think. Being in this space, I learn to see. I only ever make what every day I can't believe. I gotta go. This the only life I know. I believe it in my mind, so I know it's time to show. This the only vibe to go. I do believe it. Uh, do you believe it? Uh, I said, are you a believer till the end? When you're from the low, can you believe in it again? No longer ever questioning yourself if you believe it, though. You never questioning yourself if you believe it, though. Now there's one thing about the future. You should know that you deserve it all. Landing on the moon, take a belief that's going vertical. Being in the space, I learn to see. I only ever make what every day I can believe. I gotta go. It's the only life I know. I believe it in my mind, so I know it's time to show. This dot com. All right, all right. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. I'm Ian Bellina, your host. Welcome to the 100X Show. And today we have the pleasure of having the CEO of uh, O1 Labs, uh, Evan Shapiro. Evan, welcome. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, awesome, awesome to, to have you on. So you, you're basically with the, the project Mino Protocol, which claims to be the smallest slash lightest blockchain protocol in the world. Definitely quite the claim. I'm uh, definitely very curious to kind of learn more about you. Our team has looked into the project. We actually do think this is a very, very promising project. Obviously, everything we say here is not financial advice or is your own research. This is just an interview between us going into the technology. And as usual, this is just a, a free interview. No, no sponsored uh, reviews at all. However, very, very intriguing project. Welcome on the show. Uh, so for anybody out there, kind of give pe people an intro on yourself. Who is Evan Shapiro? Yeah, so I, I guess like, yeah, besides CEO of O of One Labs building Mina, I, I I guess I'm like historically like a programmer. I, I really just like programming. I uh, went and did a computer science degree and I was uh, doing research in robotics. Um, at some point though, I, uh, I had known about crypto, but I like the crypto bug, like I guess like built up to the point where I decided to get more deeply involved in the space. That's awesome. So what's your crypto origin story? How did you get into crypto? So I, I, I like in, so I guess to set like the time I was in high school um, and mm -hmm. uh, I was good friends with my now co-founder Isaac Meckler and like I was spending a lot of time just browsing the internet, just going on forums like Less Wrong and just exploring technology and what was current and Somehow I found Bitcoin at this time, and this was like 2010, 2011, so not sure how that happened, but I was just really intrigued by it, this like magic internet money thing. And mm -hmm. I, I just like kind of followed the space like from there onward. I like all the altcoins coming up, all like Ethereum and all the other chains coming up on there without really ever getting 100% involved in, until starting this project, but like very intrigued and always watching um, as, it, as it really started. So where did the idea for Mino Protocol come from? It came from, well, it came from a couple of things. So first, when Isaac, my, my co-founder and I, like, started living in the same place again, we started talking about cryptocurrency again, like, in high school. And I think that at the time in high school, we kind of had this naive vision of crypto is just going to remake everything. It's going to be great. Everyone's going to participate. And uh, awesome. But... <laughs> It didn't. It was pretty clear that wasn't really exactly what was happening. It was uh, the space was still kind of going slowly, and particularly verification uh, was a huge problem for people because you couldn't really verify the blockchain unless you had all these resources, and you know not everyone in the world like has like a huge server somewhere they can do that with. So there needed to be another way, and it was um, so Isaac and I just like were spending time talking about these technical problems and thinking what could we do there, and. 
at the same time, he had been learning about um, CK Snarks at uh, UC Berkeley, and we put together that was the, the direction we could, could solve the verification problem. With. OK, so we have to explain this to our entire audience. How do you fit a blockchain in what, 22 kilobits? Kilobytes? Yeah. How is that possible yeah, so, <laughs> from, from a technology yeah. standpoint? Yeah, so this, this relates to that verification problem I was just referring to. So when you have a blockchain, you really have, it serves two purposes. The first purpose is it is a proof of you are dealing with the real state of the of the protocol. You're, you're actually on like the state that's become to consensus to, and you can interact with that uh, permissionlessly and safely. The other aspect is the entire history of the of the chain that actually has like you know the equivalent of looking back in your bank statement five years ago. It has like all the transactions forever. So what we've done with Mina is I've kind of decoupled these in like a really um, a, a really useful way, which is we have this zk snark which serves as the proof of all the history, so that you can download the zk snark and get that full proof of everything. And you can then look up a path to an individual account, and putting those two together is only 22 kilobytes. Because um, most users, if you design the protocol in, in a certain way, you don't need to get access to the state from 10 years ago unless you're holding that yourself. Instead, you can just look at this little proof and know you're acting with the current correct state of the chain. Does this make sense? Okay. Um, so in a way, it's kind of like a directory that files just a directory pointing to other nodes. What's what's a good metaphor here? Maybe it's like um, you could either like here, here's sort here's a metaphor that that might might help might be helpful with it is imagine like a blockchain is just you know literal blocks like a long string of literal blocks and one way to get a proof mm -hmm. that those blocks exist is to you know carry them over to your house, and you can examine them all and check them all. Or maybe another way is taking a photo of them. And you can look at the photo, and you can know that that photo is, um, represents that that blockchain really exists. And the snark is kind of like an undoctorable photo that shows that blockchain exists and what the uh, newest block looks like, so you can get access to the current state. That sounds great. So what can this blockchain run? Yeah. So. It can do a couple things. The first is it can be downloaded just to um, kind of regular devices, not like these huge servers. But the small proof means that the blockchain can be downloaded to small devices and fully checked without having to go through um, permissioned things like an Infura or like other permission services. You can just get permissionless access to the chain through the little proof. The other thing we have with it is basically the tool set of zero knowledge proofs and ZK snarks. So developers can build applications on Mina that use privacy and can verify off-chain data and computation in a very efficient way. So we can get user information onto the chain um, privately. So is the use case with this all, all kinds of developers? Are you trying to target maybe hardware developers for embedded devices? So I. I, I guess like the I think the concrete use case right now is right now in crypto there is so much uh, I, I think we're seeing increased demand for like building real world things on top of the technology and I think that increasingly with things like DeFi the technical foundation is there but we're going to have to start moving on real world data in a way that's actually private if we're going to be able to like really have this technology achieve potential because there's just so much information that already exists that's out there that. If you just put it on the chain right now, both that way you won't scale, but B, we don't want to just like start exposing all of our personal information on blockchains. We need some way to do it with privacy. So the zero knowledge proof part of Mina moves it on to the protocol in a safe way. And the uh, the, the zero knowledge proof aspect with like this inexpensive proof makes it easy for devices to know they're working with the real chain state without any centralized entities. So who do you view as your biggest competition? I mean, I feel like at this point, it's kind of a, it's a funny state. I feel like at the same, in some ways, it's like all the other layer one chains that are like buying for developers that are buying for users. And I think that 
in another sense, uh, we can probably be collaborators with them in terms of like bringing them privacy tech and bringing them you know, good access to crypto in a secure way. I think in that sense, our, our competitors are things like Infura, things like MetaMask that currently give you access to chains. And I think that the privacy side is early with respect to other projects, but I think that there's going to be other layer two scaling things on top of Ethereum, which will add privacy. And that will also be competitors at some point. All right. Now, one thing I found very fascinating here, uh, producer, if you could switch to my screen, you have quite the list of all-star investors. So Coinbase Ventures, uh, Dragonfly Capital, Fanbushi Capital, uh, IOSG Ventures, Kindred Ventures, Naval is an investor. So Polychain, Paradigm, so NGC. So speak to the, the investors backing you. Um, what did they see uh, in your company or project that made them really want to kind of support you? Yeah, so we met we met uh, Naval, Ravikant, just through like, we were like, let's get to start a company, we're gonna try to meet everyone, and we met Naval through that. And I think what was exciting to a lot of these early people was this kind of promise of a long-term sustainable and kind of zero friction access to cryptocurrency, this like technical architecture, which um, just has substantial advantages over traditional blockchains where you have to check the entire chain to use it. And it means you can um, scale in a way that doesn't damage decentralization because everyone can have access to it, like I said. And the other use cases that we're doing like more currently, I think, are like kind of like the, the initial like kind of steps along that journey. But I think that there's just such a long-term promise in the, this architecture that we're designing that um, that was drew, drew a lot of interest to the project early. Okay, so the blockchain space is getting very very crowded, and at this point, there isn't really a shortage, in my opinion, of great blockchain products or even good blockchain products. I think the biggest challenge now is getting adoption, getting developers to actually build on your protocol. So how do you plan to get adoption in a crowded marketplace? Yeah, so the, the promise of what we've done with smart contracting on Mina is that you get access to all the zero knowledge proof stuff we built in the protocol as a developer. And we're working to make that really easily exposed so that you don't have to be like a cryptography PhD to get access to it. It's going to be more like normal programming. And if you're a project right now building on you know, Ethereum, any of these other chains, there's a lot of real world data that you want to start bringing onto your platform, especially if you're in DeFi. And by plugging into our protocol, you can start adding some of that functionality on top. So we don't necessarily want to be like, build everything on Mina. We want to be like, Mina is like a helpful tool that can help all the other chains and all the other applications add in these important privacy features. So is it compatible with Ethereum EVM and other Ethereum dApps? Not, not in like, I mean, depending on how you as a developer you're thinking about it. Way. So less so importing and more that, um, well, for one, we're working um, with Ethereum Foundation on adding pickles of our, our snark ver verifier to that on top of Ethereum, which should make it easy to build a bridge between the two platforms. Uh, it's less about porting code between the platforms and more about can I as a developer have an add-on on top of Mina, which then interacts with my full application on Ethereum and brings those features over to that platform. Um, so it's more okay. like I'll have a comp I think both components living on yeah, the chain. And speaking of that, can you speak about the partnership you have with the Ethereum Foundation that was announced recently? Yeah, so we're working together them to find and uh, have someone build a. Our, so our zk snark is called Pickles, and uh, they're we're working with them to build a verifier for Pickles on Ethereum, along with a proof of concept um, uh, verifier of the Mina blockchain on top of Ethereum. And, and this is a good step towards a bridge, which will allow both users to verify things on Ethereum in a permissionless way and bring some of these privacy features back over to Ethereum. That's great. So have you had a chance to talk with uh, Vitalik? Do you, are you guys work, working together? Uh, honestly, like, I feel like Vitalik and I have like kind of passed in the hallway a few times. So like we haven't had like a deep <laughs> conversation yet. <laughs> uh, so sort of. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so 
Now, the network launch is coming up soon. Can you kind of speak on that? Kind of the process, how yes. people who want maybe want to partake in the launch can partake in it? Yeah, so we have been building this thing for, I guess, almost four years now. And we just finished our adversarial network earlier this year um, in, in, in January. And we're basically yeah, ready to launch mainnet. We're working very hard to like kind of just get the Genesis ledger 100% ready and um, make sure everyone who's on the network has um, been able to test and make sure they have access and everything for like the initial launch. And yeah, so it's it's happening pretty soon. I think like uh, if you are basically if you're interested, I think like follow along both like. Uh, on our Discord and our Twitter, there's like lots of opportunities to get involved still, and we're like community is extremely important to us. We think like community and the tech are like kind of hand in hand, and like what we build. So uh, there'll be much more opportunities. You have a very large community, well. over thirty thousand people in the Telegram group, I believe, right? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's it's uh, I, it, it's it was thir it's actually forty now. Like it, it's it, oh, 40. it's like it's going exponentially <laughs> or something. Um, yeah, pretty crazy. Yeah, it, it is crazy. I mean. We were just looking over some of our stats, and like a year ago, when we were still just kind of like coding it. I mean, this is understandable because we were like at the time just like all engineers head down coding it. Like you know, community was like I think it, like an order of magnitude smaller than it is today. Um, but I think that think like uh, the, yeah. sorry, what do you think was the catalyst yeah, no, to that community growth? I think it was um, honestly. I think half of it was like the tech getting ready. I think people have a sense for when like. The tech is like kind of in the, you know, people are we're, we're still tinkering it, and then when it's actually kind of out there, um, and I think that like since we got to that point where the tech was in a good place, uh, we've just been like working really hard to like let people know about the project, to like give the opportunity to get involved through our Genesis uh, founding member program, um, and we invested a lot into like just really like providing resources and support for the community. I think that's. That's, Any um, idea in terms of dates for a possible launch? Um, not besides like very soon. <laughs> we're gonna have something. Um, we're gonna have something public on like this in like the next few weeks as to like the actual like kind of launch sequence. Um, but like until it's like a hundred percent finalized, uh, I'll you know I'll get in trouble. So that's uh, so just follow along. <laughs> and, uh, it'll, it'll now, are you are you soon. able to speak on the community sale? Um, so we we have mentioned in our token economics that we released um, that there will be some event of this kind, but I don't have any other details at the moment for it. Um, that's yeah. another follow along our official channels and uh, local details. Now, for those who maybe are curious or are new to, to this protocol, mm -hmm. you're not ERC twenty based token. You're building your own blockchain, so you'll have your own wallet, I assume. Yes. Okay. Correct. So. Is that uh, something people can download, or is that also going to come in the future when you're launching the network? So at the moment, we mostly have tooling for people that, like, basically for command line. So there's, like, local nodes you can run that have their own private key storage, as well as a Ledger app that um, we've, like, you know, built for Ledger um, and security audited, but it's not, like, a GUI. We have some community members that are building out, like, uh, wallets that, like, Pretty good and pretty promising, but like I can't like you know they're they're still kind of in the works um, for that. Okay, all right. Well, uh, let's take some questions here from the audience. If you have any question for Evan, please just post it in the chat. We'll pull questions directly from YouTube, Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, everywhere this live stream is happening. So let's see what questions you have. Okay, somebody's talking about a challenge. I'm not sure. Okay, I see a question here from Artem. Why did you drop candidates from the five cohort? Um, okay, I'm not sure if you know what that means. Um, it could be referring to like our Genesis founding of the program. So we have a, um, we've been onboarding community members to um, to like our, our basically like or this this program where people are having tokens to become block producers on mainnet, um, and every time it's like so difficult. Like there's so many great people, and we have to like uh, choose like a subset to like get in every time to the program. 
Um, mm -hmm. So it could be referring to like people that did or didn't get into that, that program the last time. But I mean, the community is important to us, and there'll be more opportunities to get involved with things like this in the future. Now, is it possible for people who, who maybe missed the early uh, developer program or mining program to join and kind of help with the with the nodes and the validation? Is that still available, or is that kind of done? It's available. It's available, but not through like a token grant at the moment. Um, yeah, I mean, more more words soon. On we we definitely plan to like extend opportunities to get involved in the protocol. Um, including in that way, so but it's not fair. All right, next question from Elmira G. How would you explain to a five or six year old child what the Muna protocol and ZK Snarks are? Oh, wow. It's a, <laughs> That's kind of tough. It's a fun one. And it's so hard because like, uh, even like if I had to explain like public key cryptography or like hashes or any of these newer stuff, like I would be like, how do I do that? Um, I guess I would go back to um, sort of the photo metaphor I said earlier. Like, let, let me give, so basically I would say like, let's say that you wanted to prove someone that you had like, uh, you know, a certain toy at your house. Uh, one thing you could do is you could like, the toy is very large, so it's, it's pretty heavy for you to carry around. So one thing you could do is you could bring the toy into school the next day, or one thing you could do is you could tell, have them come to your house and you could show them the, the, the toy. Instead, though, what you could do now is just take a photo with you and the toy and just like send them that photo, and you know they, that would probably convince them that that you really have it. Um, Mina is like okay. that for like financial data on the Mina protocol. That's great. So it's kind of like sending electronic data in a way. It's kind of like <laughs> kind of like what exchanges do with KYC. And they want to have you put up a sign or a paper with your name on it and, and the date. OK, uh, next question yeah. from, I'm sorry, this name is in Russian, so I can't really pronounce it. I think it's Kupna. Just put that. OK, anyway, is it possible to create a bridge between the MENA protocol and the Ethereum or Bitcoin blockchain for visibility of the entire blockchain using ZK Snark with a size of 22 KB? Yes. So I, this is like one thing that I definitely want us to drive towards and we're trying to, to move towards. Uh, what we can do is we can have a proof that shows basically like that attests to the current state of Ethereum or the current state of Bitcoin. It doesn't have all the accounts in that proof, but it shows you here's trustlessly what the current state is. And then you can off chain in some way that doesn't require trust get another piece of data which goes down to an individual account off that trust listing. So yes, and there's a little more technical details, I guess, but the idea is that we can get a trustless proof of those other chains on you. All right, that's great to know. Uh, next question from Sir Hip. How reliable are recursive ZK snarks? So they're, they're pretty reliable now. Um, I, I guess I can read reliable couple ways. So I'll mention a couple ways they've improved. Uh, the main one they've improved at, I would say, is it used to be you needed a trusted setup to do this in any performant way at all um, until a couple of years ago. Like, But in the last year or so, the uh, there's been some improvements on the zero knowledge proof side such that you no longer need a trusted setup for zero knowledge proofs, even recursive ones. And the performance is still like pretty good. And so between both of those, like, either reading of Reliable, I think it's in pretty good shape now. Uh, it's been amazing to see how much ZK Snarks have improved over the last couple of years. OK, uh, next question, once again in Russian. Uh, can't really pronounce it, but to my Russian friends, спасибо. Uh, <laughs> how did you manage to combine ZK Snarks and proof of stake mechanism? Uh, this is a good question, because it was actually a little, it was kind of hard. Um, <laughs> So the key is that you need some way. So you have these two succinct proofs that come in. You're, you're like a node in the network. You're trying to figure out what's the real state of the blockchain. You have these two succinct proof comes in. And you're trying to ask yourself which one is real. But you don't have access to like the whole history of the blockchain. So you don't know whether you're suffering from like what's called the long fork problem, whether or not like someone's forked a long time ago. and. Um, uh, kind of tricked you into thinking that one a false state is stronger than the other state. 
the, the key is we've been able to adapt something called Ouroboros Genesis, which is what Cardano uses, to encapsulate a history of all of the chain um, strength, basically, into the current state of the blockchain. So you can uh, compare any two states that come in over which one has had a, like, kind of a, a weaker moment in the past to know which one is the stronger one. Um, and we have, we, this is called Ouroboros Samasika, and we have a pub paper on it if anyone's interested in like really diving into how we have succinct proof of stake working. In, in. All right, so next question from Ivan. For some transactions and communications, do you think it is viable, do you think it is a viable possibility to build up a new communication stack on top of Mina to certify the content of certain network communications in certain sectors like aviation? I, I mean, I, I guess my answer is like, let me say a little bit of, I, I don't know aviation personally, so it's hard for me to like really dig in, like in, in like super detail to it. But I think yes, like basically it's a public blockchain. People can put whatever data on it they want, whatever computations on it they want. And the proof can attest to any information that is on that, in, in that state. So that state can be referring to aviation, other blockchains, uh, DeFi, privacy, whatever it's still accessible and verifiable in this 22 kilobytes. So it's, it's, I, I, it's hard for me to tell exactly how well it would fit aviation, but it's uh, mm -hmm. really, yeah, about what you can program and be verified. All right, uh, next question from Dimitri. You guys are very popular in Russia, it looks like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is, there, is there a reason for that? I think the Russian community like took off like earlier than other countries and then it just kind of like snowballs and like we've been like you know really like appreciative and happy to have some people from russia it's been like both like fun for us like not being from russia as well as like um yeah. great to meet everyone from there. yeah russia is great i was there for the world cup uh, had a had a great time and and huge crypto scene one of our largest crypto world tour events back in 2018 was in russia over a thousand people came out i was i was very shocked wow. very huge community over there for crypto and blockchain okay a uh, question from dimitri uh, Mina 22 kilobytes and all the talk about it. What will this size give to the average user? What is the advantage of being able to store the entire blockchain on the phone? So if you're a user right now, let me just like give the comparison between the two worlds. So if you're a user right now and you want to use cryptocurrency from your phone, you're, well, you're kind of in like a bind because one option you have is you can download the whole chain onto your phone, but that's like not going to happen. That's like both like bandwidth wise and energy wise, and your battery is going to be like not happy to, to do that. So that's not happening. The other thing you can do right now is you can find some centralized party, like, you know, like a Coinbase of the world or an Infura of the world who you trust to give you that data. So as long as you have someone you trust, you're good. But the key with Mina is it removes the, the, the requirement to have like that trusted brand name behind uh, you accessing the chain. This 22 kilobytes stands in for that trust that you have with that other party. And, and this is really important, both if we want crypto to like be a space that like is kind of leveling the play field and doesn't have like these like middlemen come up that like create brands around them, as well as like if you're someone that doesn't have access to one of these centralized parties in your own country, this can be a way for you to get access to crypto also. Okay, our uh, next question is from Tim Smith. How is Snap more powerful than dApps on other chains? So Snaps are basically, they have all the features of dApps, but they add on these, these new features of ZK Snarks. Uh, and you could do that on another smart contract platform, but doing it on Mina is very efficient to add these the snark functionality on top because the chain is already effectively a giant snark. It's all recursively being put back together. And that brings you like both a access to privacy in a way that you can't just get access to in other chains. And it also gives you access to verifying larger computations in an efficient way on chain. So instead of having like a huge computation that I run on Ethereum and costs a lot of gas, I can put a proof of that computation on Mina, and that proof is much, much uh, more efficient because the proof is constant size, size to check, but it attests to uh, you know, however, however big of a computation you want to do and however much data you want to put into that computation option. Now, could you say Mina could be used almost as a side chain or as layer two scaling for Ethereum? Sort of. This is something I think about a bit because like, 
I guess I, I think like what is like the difference between a layer two and a layer one at the end of the day? And I think it's consensus. Like a layer two is a layer one's basically similar to a, a a layer one that has been bridged to another layer one is the same as a layer two on one of those layer ones that is dependent on the consensus of the other layer one. So maybe a short answer is just like I think yes. Like I, I definitely like want to see Mina like help these other chains as like sort of like layer twos to them uh, through bridges. Okay. Uh, next question from Timo. When you had the great idea of zk snark cryptography to make the blockchain scalable, what use did you think of? That is, if you could choose, what use would you like to give to your product? Yeah, so I I, I can't like I, I was Elsie, my co-founder, is the one who like had like the, the the connection. Like we were both like thinking about this verification problem, and he had put together this zk snark plus. Um, Plus verification problem solution. The the pro I think it would still be the problem we originally set out to solve with with Mina is like the one I would say is the most important, which is like giving like regular average people that don't have like a big company and a server farm access to cryptocurrency in a trustless way. Because I, I don't want to see the I, I mean me personally I don't want to see the industry like go back to being something that's uh, very institutionalized and has all these different brand names in it. And I think that. Um, uh, Sync blockchains can help make that happen. Okay, but couldn't you say, <laughs> to be fair, because Mina is backed by VCs, right? Who are institutions? This is true. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it, I I would say that like yeah, the importance there is like, on one hand, there's like we have traditional companies that have like uh, they're they're. The, their, their companies beholden to shareholders. There's no real way for users to get like insight into what's happening. There's no transparency there. Whereas with a protocol, we have the possibility as users to uh, really directly see what the protocol is doing and have a guarantee outside of just contracts. A guarantee that like the math says that this is what uh, the state of the world is, and we can trust that in a way that's like very unique to zk snaps. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, next question. Is Mina Protocol going gonna create their own ecosystem? Um, yeah. So once we have Snaps out, uh, we're initially going to focus mostly on um, like just developers. We feel like giving developers access to technology is really important, and it's definitely like a goal after that. Or even like during that, and even like some of the stuff we're doing right now is to start bringing on other companies, building on the protocol, building on Snaps. Uh, it's definitely a goal, and there'll definitely be like opportunities to get involved in that. It's, it's definitely one of our like, biggest goals. Okay, our next question from Mikhailo. Hello, will the will the Mina Foundation team reward community members who help promote the project on social networks, but did not win a grant? And did a huge amount of work. Um, I I can't say to like the, you know, foundation. I mean, like it's definitely a goal to like make sure community members are like included in the project, and it's definitely a goal. But like to the specifics, like I don't have an answer. Okay, uh, Fran Torres says, "Is there any issue or cons with zk snarks? It just sounds perfect, and I couldn't find anything wrong with it." <laughs> I mean, I think that's what's so good about ZK Snarks. I, I'll say, I'll say what the downsides are. So, it was this was an easy question before because you had the trusted setup, but now there's no trusted setup, so it's like that's not an issue anymore. I would still say the main issue is um, the performance is not as good as native. So I would you wouldn't want to like um, it's like a hundred x slower about than than off off. Uh, and then, like native computation, so you wouldn't want to do like machine learning or anything in this still. Um, that's like the main one. And also, I would say at the moment it's still harder to program for, although we are aiming and working to remove that as a uh, as a barrier. Okay. Uh, next question from Miguel Rubio: Have you been contacted by other projects like Ethereum? Uh, I, I, yeah, I guess like uh, besides like the the thing we're working on with Ethereum right now for verifying pickles on Ethereum, like 
there, there's a few other projects I'll work with, but we, that we're like we're looking to work with and build things with. But it's um, it's it's uh, you know early, so hopefully we'll have more things on it soon once they're like. Okay. Oh wow, so many questions here. If you're enjoying this live stream, be sure to smash that like button, share this video with your friends, crypto family, tell them about about the lightest blockchain in the world. Uh, definitely very intriguing project. Once again, to all our audience, we did actually share this uh, code review. Our, our blockchain engineers definitely put this on our radar, and this is definitely worth keeping an eye on. But everything we say here, as usual, is not investment advice or do your own research. We're just diving into the technology. Okay, uh, next question here from Timo. If simple nodes simply have to synchronize 20, 22 kilobytes thanks to ZK Snark technology, what size will the nodes that keep track of all transactions be? Hmm. So there's two other kinds of nodes in Mina. The first is nodes that keep track of everything historically. Those are called archive nodes in our system. Those are large. They have all the transactions that ever happened. But uh, key to the protocol is that in the programming model, there's no way to like refer to that old data. You can only refer to the current state. So from a consensus nodes perspective, you don't need access to that historical data. However, um, if you want the historical data, there's going to be services that can provide it. For consensus nodes, they need access to the current state, which is proportional to the number of accounts that basically have non-zero number of tokens in them. And when we compare that to other chains, it looks like if we you know, were the same size as like Ethereum or Bitcoin, that would be in the you know, order of magnitude of a gigabyte. Uh, so you know, it's not tiny, but it's, uh, it's uh, also not really, really huge like in other chains uh, for consensus. OK, uh, next question from Fran Torres. What would have happened if Mina was present when Binance collapsed and stopped with withdrawing ETH a few days ago? Being the lightest blockchain would have helped on such a strong demand. Thanks. I, I mean, I think like it definitely, if, if we were like fully launched and everything was available, and if there are already like DEXs on top of the platform, then I think that those DEXs probably would have seen an uptick in activity, and people would see in the context of that event the advantages to not having um, a centralized entity being dependent on a centralized entity for access to the technology. OK, I mean, so are you saying that a full-fledged DEX like Uniswap and its current load could run on MENA protocol at 22 kilobytes? Yes. I, I mean, you know, someone has to like come along and build that, uh, which should yeah. happen hopefully someday. But, but once it's done, yeah, then, um, then That's yeah. That's crazy. OK, uh, next question. Once again, in Russian, uh, I'm going to butcher the name, so I won't, won't even try. Uh, when are you trying to scale to smart contracts? So yeah, the launch version is not it's just transactions. The smart contracts are like behind a feature flag. They're um, going to be on a dev net, but they're not like on the mainnet protocol. We're looking to enable that later this year. Basically, it means like us like and the community are going to have to go in and really test that again. Probably have like another thing similar to our adversarial to make sure that uh, it's uh, it's like secure and it's in good shape. It's it's kind of funny because like all the code's actually there in mainnet. It's just like turned off. <laughs> so we just have to like really test it and get it turned on for that to work. Okay. All right. Next question from Ivan Diaz Perez regarding the. Development of snaps and other Mina blockchain supported tools. How is the Mina Foundation going to deal with software quality of externals to boost trust with official endorsements? Yeah, I think our like I, I think for one, uh, one thing we can do that's pretty powerful is having security audits. I, I think uh, if we can security audit all like the essential components of the chain, I think that's like going to go a long way. Um, I, I think in general, also like the way these ecosystems get built, like it's just like kind of anyone can participate in it, and I think that's both like awesome and that is like something that like I don't have like a perfect answer for at the moment. Besides saying that like I think that people in the space have shown like they care and that they do a good job like checking to make sure that they're writing solid code and that the security audits is like um, goes goes along. So kind of off topic question, I'm just curious, as a founder, prior to kind of getting where you are, 
what crypto conferences were you going to? Like, is there some, is there any conference where let's say somebody could, could have found you early, right? I kind of got involved uh, in the project. The, the Berkeley, uh, the Berkeley conference, uh, like before Watch we even started conference? the company. Yeah. Like, um, I'm, I'm forgetting the name now, but Berkeley has like a very technical, like blockchain photography com conference where, you know, it's people like, uh, <laughs> you know, from like Ethereum and Zcash, like explaining like very technical parts of their projects. And we actually, you, you definitely could have run to me and Isaac there, like before we like even started the project, we were just kind of like telling random people <laughs> what we were working on and thinking about uh, <laughs> whether to do it for real or not. Um, that's, and that's I, cool. that was and then after that. that any other pro any other um, conferences after that? Yeah, I would say like I, there's been a bunch, but I uh, the I, I went to DevCon last year in Osaka. Uh, I was there. So like, <laughs> cool. oh, very I cool. You. Yeah. So so yeah, we, <laughs> we were wandering around at that event. That was really fun. I, it was um, I, I mean like yeah, it was. I, I think those events are so awesome because like it really kind of you're all distributed, and it really feels like you're all just like this little community again. Um, yeah. which is like very powerful. Now, were you doing a talk there or were you just kind of attending talks? Um, I think my, my, my co-founder did a couple events like that were technical uh, outside of the main conference track, but like at like side events. Uh, mostly I was there to just attend to meet people to like, like yeah. All right, that's, that's great. Uh, next question from Blockchain and Crypto. Evan, why did you choose Aura Burrows? as the base consensus for your project, do you think this is the best solution given the specificity of the MENA protocol? Yes. So we, at the time, we were thinking hard about between doing something that was like traditional, like BFT Paxos, uh, and doing something that is like, well, basically Ouroboros, basically, yeah. So like BFT, we liked that it has instant finality and that, um, well, instant finality is the big one. But you take a big hit to the number of nodes that can participate in the network. You're, you have to cap the number of participants to like, I haven't seen more than like 100 or 200. I think Cosmos is the most of like a little more than 100. And we knew for the project we wanted to do something that could be really inclusive in the consensus layer of like a lot of people. Uh, and that made the decision easy towards Ouroboros because there's no cap on the number of like participators, participators, um, on that. So th that that was like our, our reasoning for going with Ouroboros was was this unlimited participation feature. Very interesting. Okay, uh, next question from uh, Use. Mina Protocol has been incubated in O1 Labs. Is there any other project that is incubated at the moment? What would be a typical project to be incubated in O1 Labs? The other one that is sort of incubated, but sort of also kind of essential to the protocol is this programming language Snarky, uh, which is a programming language for making it easier to write snarks. Before Snarky, it was much closer to laying out, there was this tool called LibSnark that was much closer to like laying out circuits sort of, like if you know what that world's like. Um, but Snarky made it much easier for us to code the protocol and like Mina is like a very large snark like the protocol kind of is all the logic is in a snark and Snarky is what made that possible. I think other projects we want to incubate are basically tooling for the snaps world. Like if we can like um, one thing we're thinking of right now is like a bridge between uh, HTTPS via on the internet and Mina. So Mina can verify things on HTTPS and move those things onto the chain with some privacy for personal information. And projects like that, that like are incubating or like uh, building on top of snaps in a way that like enables more privacy is is like the kinds of things that we're going to focus on after, after launch. Okay, uh, next question. Sanket Patel. I understand that Mina allows anyone with a smartphone or even feature phone to verify transactions, but why does that matter? People are, are used to rely on miners to verify transactions. So I, I think it's actually, there's, there's two stages where verification happens. So there's verification from the miners, which are like 
adding things onto the protocol. There's also verification as a user to know you're on the most current state of the chain. And right now, as a user, you're kind of limited in that you just have to either download the whole chain yourself, or you have to find one of these trusted parties to, um, to tell you what the current state of the chain is. And I, I think that, like, I think it's a like both a threat to the space to have like these centralized entities that we're so dependent on to like get access, but also, I mean, this maybe this is like, I, I think this metaphor works. I think it's like maybe a little like, net neutrality in the U.S. Like we want these platforms that we access crypto through to be neutral. We want to like not be subject to like companies that are getting between us and cryptocurrency, but but right now we are in the same way that like someone mentioned earlier that like uh, when Binance had issues that made it hard to access that exchange like. Uh, if it's just a bunch of kind of brand name companies, it's kind of the same as net neutrality, where you now have this layer of influence over the space that didn't have to be there. Um, and and I think that's like what I'd be excited to add to like the to the space through through this, and that's what like verifying the transactions brings you. I hope, okay. Hope that uh, next. Uh, next question, Hitesh Bhatti. How? Sorry, I'm trying to read this. How do you use ZK Snark technology differently from Zcash? Are you guys solving the same problem in a different way? Or are you, are you guys solving altogether different problems? It's, it's closer to, yeah, it's altogether different problems. Uh, they're using their zero knowledge proofs for privacy. So they have like that, the secure enclave that you can move things in and out of, and it's private when it's in the secure enclave. We, we don't do anything like that. Our, our solution is entirely about having this a sync blockchain that can vary through snaps like really um, really efficiently. So it's it's the same tech, but like applied in very different ways. Um, but I that's what I do hope that we can get privacy on top of uh, on, on top of Mina like soon slash like one day like as a snap. Okay. Uh, next question from Catherine Yusek, do you believe Mina will be able to overcome the notorious blockchain trilemma and achieve decentralizations, uh, so, sorry, decentralization, scalability, and security? Yes, so this was like, yeah, this is definitely like, was a core motivator to us early on, like, I, I think this does solve that that core, like, trilemma, the scaling trilemma, because it, it does solve it in that, to historically, you have this issue where if you were getting all these transactions to the chain, it becomes harder to verify. But once the chain is just constant size, that problem goes away. So uh, the thought is that we should be able to, on the engineering side, uh, increasingly optimize and test higher throughputs. And that won't change this 22 kilobyte property of MENA and won't damage decentralization. OK. All right. Uh, we've gone through lots of questions. Uh, let's now go to the hot seat. This is a segment of the show where we like to put founders uh, and just learn more about them. So first question, what are three books you've read, Evan, that have uh, changed your life? Changed my life? Um, I, I, <laughs> this maybe is a little cliche, but like I really like The Little Prince. Um, <laughs> I, I just like, uh, I feel like that has like a lot of good like life lessons and is just both like very elegantly written and between those two properties like i thought it was really inspiring um i i when i read recently sorry, um what's that book about the little prince the little, um little prince yeah for some reason i'm thinking machiavelli that's a that's a different book right <laughs> <laughs> different different um it's like um it's by this guy um i'm gonna butcher the name like saint exuberi um and and he's okay, yeah. um just, uh, just found it yeah it's it's um it's it's just like a bunch of like life lessons like told very elegantly and like a very like um well well done framing like I think um definitely worth a read if you haven't read it yet um, there it okay. is yeah. um okay I, I thought I thought of another one while we were talking um. I, I think it's called. What's it called? Uh, the fact that I can't remember the name. Uh, it, it's. It's. I, I think like this book is like. It's an online book. It's very. Um, 
it's it's I would say like it's a little it's a little rough right now, but I think the ideas in it are really important. It's called uh, I think it's called World After Capital. And World it's After Capital. World After Capital. And it's it's like a theory that we're reaching a point now, or at least we're transitioning to a place where capital is no longer as scarce as it once was. I think we'll all agree yeah. capital is still yeah. very scarce for a large portion of the world, and the, that is By, uh, like both a huge Wenger. issue we have to solve. He's a right? VC. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's, it's yeah, funnily yeah. enough, it's by a VC, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's, um, it's just this theory that we are transitioning out of a place where capital is scarce to a place where knowledge is scarce. And a lot of our old ways of thinking about how we like distribute goods, how we think about like running society may not apply in that new world. We're just going to end up in like this like hyper advertised like consumerist state that like doesn't have to be that way. Because what are we why optimize for like capital spending when we're no longer in a place where capital is as scarce as it once was? Maybe there's other things related to like knowledge, related to learning that we should be optimizing. Um, so I, I, I think like to me, this is like the, the start of like um, I, I hope a lot of really good um, conversation on like what the world could look like. But to me, it was like really uh, intriguing. Um, I don't know if I have like a third one that's like as like I'll, I'll mention just a, maybe one of my favorite books. Maybe my favorite book, um, "If on a Winter's Night a Traveler" by Italo, Italo Calvino. Um, Winter's Night it's Traveler. Like, if on a Winter's Night a Traveler. Um, it's, it's just like, a, a, it's sort of a collection of short stories that are like linked together by like, uh, they keep getting interrupted in, in, a, in a way it's, it's different than like, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the Arabian like thousand nights sort of story for it. But, um, I, I just really like the book and I don't have another third one. So I, it's just a fun read from me. All right. Definitely very interesting books. So we'll have to check those out. Uh, okay, next question. Who are three people, living or dead, who have inspired you, besides family and friends? Um, I, I, one that's that's currently alive, like, um, I, I have been, I've, I've like, Bren, Brene Brown is, is one person. Um, I think, like, she's, like, um, like a data-driven, like, emotional, like, psychologist I, I guess is how you say it and I, I think brown. like is her name Bre Brene Brown Brene Brown okay um so data driven and I think just she just psychologist you said yeah she, she definitely like she dresses up all of her work in like you know relatable stories and stuff but like I, I really like um I, I think like both like her work is really inspiring because like it I think it's a lot of like Kind of good like psychological like perspective on like uh for both people and for societies that like i think is like really relevant today um and i found like personally um very inspiring so yeah she, she's definitely one yeah. uh let me think i i think like it's hard for me to choose one person of like this era but like like claude shannon von neumann all those people like they're just like it's it's incredible to see how prolific they were in like doing like what are like really like the foundations of like a lot of modern like everything uh especially like i find information theory um very like interesting to think about so like claude shannon like very incredible that they uh yeah and third person I okay. I'm I'm not sure. Like, I'll mention this person because like I've been reading a lot of their work the last like year or two. I found it really interesting. Joseph Campbell. Um, I I don't know if I like agree with him and all of his perspectives, but like, I think he's done a really good job. Like taking a lot of things that are like don't put words to that are in culture and are in like how we think about our lives and putting words to them in a way that you can now like like think about the narratives we tell ourselves at like a meta level. And I don't know if that makes sense at all, but like I'd recommend just like reading a summary of like um uh the hero's journey, I think is is uh is, is the name of Joseph the, Campbell. Of the, of the, yes. Yeah. 
All right. Um, thank you for that. Okay. Last, last question in the hot seat. What are three actions you have taken that have transformed your life? I, I think like one is like getting really deep into programming. Like, I don't know if that was like inevitable for me, but like at some point in high school, I like went and took a course on computer science. And I think that that was extremely life changing. Like both like, I really like loved programming like a lot. <laughs> and I basically just like after doing that course, like spent like all my time programming up until doing this company. <laughs> so like, <laughs> it, 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 like very, very life changing of uh, that. Um, I mean, okay, like this is like a give me, but like starting this company, I think uh, has, has yeah, been life changing for sure. Uh, for sure. Um, a lot of good opportunities both to like grow and like um, uh, try to build a building here. And like, I think that's been, I both like learned a lot and I can continue to learn a lot about like uh, myself and about like the world through, through the job. Um, third action. Okay. Uh, this is, this is something I didn't do. I decided not to go do a PhD. Um, if I had done that, like yeah. very different place right now, I, I was very close to going to do a PhD in robotics. Um, oh, wow. Into, you know, into college and, uh, would what probably still be doing that. Uh, tell? um, so, so, um, sort of, I mean, it was kind of just like, I had done a master's, a research master's for a year already, so I knew what academia was like. And mm -hmm. I kind of like realized at one point, like, I, I want to do something that's like more engaged with the world. And like, I knew that would eventually happen if I did um, research, but like, I, I didn't think I was like, almost like I wasn't ready in a sense, but also like, I didn't feel like it was for me to like, just go off and do research for seven years. Like, Maybe that would have been cool too, but uh, I'm <laughs> glad I did it this way. Yes. All right, that's great. Actually, kind of same thing with me. Um, had plans of doing a PhD, but ended up not doing it. And uh, can't complain. I mean, uh, here I am now in crypto. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much. You're now officially mm -hmm. off the hot seat. So as we wrap things up, is there anything else you'd like to cover that we haven't had a chance to talk about regarding Mina Protocol? Um, let's see. I, I, I guess just like, um, I'm really excited that we're, we're launching it soon. And I think like launching it is just like the beginning of, of like the project. And like, I'm like really excited for like our team, the community is all to like kind of work together to like have this technology realize its potential and to, to build out stuff on top of it. So nothing specific, but just excited for what comes next. All right, awesome. And where can people learn more about the project and you? Uh, I think the best place is our Discord. That's like where our community is. And if you have questions there, like there are people there are like really happy to just answer questions. So you know, we can continue the conversation. Uh, and I think that also both my Twitter uh, at Evan A. Shapiro and the company's or the protocol's Twitter at Munich Protocol are like the two best places right now to, to check out project and keep you know, all keep right on. and also this video so if you enjoyed this live stream interview with uh, evan shapiro the ceo of o1 labs uh where he discussed the project Mino protocol definitely be sure to smash the like button subscribe turn on alerts and most important of all tell a friend to tell a friend and share this video because not being in crypto at this point as we keep on saying is in our opinion a financial crime okay with that being said thank you so much evan it was great having you on board and uh, to our audience, we do have an official code review on this project, which scored pretty well. And that's why we're very uh, optimistic on this project. You can check that out by going to tokenmetrics.com. Thanks so much, Evan. Until next yeah, time, so I'd like to say the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. Thank you, crypto family. life-changing money to a point where you can buy your mom and dad a brand new house right you can pay for college loans you can invest in your future not have to work again pursue your dreams your passion not not have to have a job work that nine to five grind right break the system hack the system this is what this show is all about they said relax but never retire 
feeling detached, never inspired They told me relax, but I can't retire I'm feeling detached, never inspired Like I would live on, but never alive You know the system, AM till 5 They try to say a job to give on, they living a lie Now here's the mission, die or decide the corporate now. life is so redundant when your freedom isn't free It comes to being someone just believe that you can be And I, how can I have hunger when they tell me when to eat? How can I lead others when they tell me who to meet? Then they tell me when to come and then they tell me when to leave They say how much to give and then forget how much I need It's the precious to succeed with the lessons of the great I question who to be and saw this message is in me I gotta know Life changing money I want to work for myself, I got to work for myself, I got to go. You can't invest in your future, Ring not have to work to again. to the moon, put nerves on the shelf, I got to know. Pursue your dreams, your passion. I want to stay free, or want the safety, I got to go. Break the system, hack the system. Although they paid me, this is what the they never all made about. me. I, I want to relax, forever retire. I want to detach, I'm feeling inspired. They told me relax, but I can't retire. I gotta detach, gotta decide They got me thinking I would live on, but never alive You know the system, AM till 5 They try to say a job to give on, they living a lie Now here's the mission, die or decide You would die, hey, hey, hey I will never be a way slave, I gotta stay made Hey, hey, hey I used to see this in the 8th grade Wasn't a day late, hey I found the love that I was seeking, life that I'm leading. Ay, ay, ay. Now I can do this every weekend, cause I'm a free man. I was ay. in Tokyo, riding the job wheel, the rodeo, dancing with the devil for payment. I couldn't do see do but I was driven. The mission gave me an open road, made a decision to whip him like it's a motor show. Six figure slave, I was paid, wasn't well though. Heard a crypto underground, it became my railroad. Started making earnest money, it's for whom the bell tolls. Run from wishing for sales, clothes to sell. Now I can relax, forever retire. Now I'm detached, forever inspired. Now I can relax, forever retire. I had to detach, had to decide. And now I'm thinking I can live on, but not just survive. You know this system, AM till 5. They try to say a job to give on, they live in the lie. I made a mission, die or decide. Do or die now. Crypto retirement, yeah, that's where my mind went Started thinking higher, now they can't hire my time spent No, I'm not retire like 65 when your job ends More like an island, and if I'm by it, I buy it Free travel, dealership sweet dabble I reign like Leeds Castle, you reign like Seattle We went from sheep cattle to eating beef and mackerel at feasts No lassos, just beliefs me in a saddle You gotta know like life changing like you want to work for yourself you gotta work for yourself you gotta go not have to work again raise spirits to the moon put nerves on the shelf you gotta know pursue your dreams your passion you want to stay free or want the safety you gotta go this is what the sure is all about although they paid you they never made you no we can relax forever retire now we detach forever inspired now we can relax forever retired we had to detach had to decide and now we know that we can live on and not just survive we left the system am till five they try to say our jobs to give on they live in the lie we made a mission die or decide do or die now i'm here to put you guys on and share all the different resources and tips i come across in my journey to making a million and making a billion right and trying to share this with the world for free i'm not here to sell you some two thousand dollar course ebook webinar whatever right i'm here to put you guys on the game for free open source right the same model as blockchain bitcoin or these cryptocurrencies i'm here to share everything with you guys token metrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com.